Okay, so welcome back to another video of an acrylic pour. We're going to see how this uh, works. I have another Jackson. This time it's a dinky. Um, but I'm really excited about the color scheme I have going on. So before we get started, I have uh, this ready. This is going to be my black. And I'm doing two uh, portions to one of the pouring medium that I have here. So I did two to one for black, and then I did two to one for this here. Um, actually, maybe I did one to one. I don't know. No, I did two to one because I did half. Okay. Uh, sorry. So I got two neon green, technically. I mixed this with this glow in the dark. So we're going to try something crazy here, and we're going to try to get neon and glow in the dark for this thing and try to get it looking awesome in a black light. Um, and whenever the lights go out, so I don't know. I tried some test stuff over there, uh, but we'll see how this runs. So first off, you want to make sure that, of course, all the stuff is stripped. I taped off where I needed to, and then um, I have it leveled. I have the surface leveled, and then I put toothpicks in certain holes, not all of them, just so that way whenever I'm relining up the plates, whenever these get filled in, I'll know where they go, at least by two holes. So, um, yeah. So make sure to fill in those holes so that way you don't lose them when paint goes over them. And I think we are ready to begin. I have my straw on me because that's what I like to use. Um, and I got my paints here. So uh, we'll start with black because uh, that is the base. So just like the other one, doing black. So we have orange, neon orange with glow in the dark in it. And then we have neon green with glow in the dark in it. So we're gonna see how this turns out. So one thing I like doing is I like making a run of black and then the colors. So like the base color and then the other ones, unfortunately, I can't show it because I forgot to set up stuff for it. So I'm just going to do it right here, maybe. Turned out. This is what I'm most excited for with this guitar. Yeah. <laughs> it looks awesome. With the uh, black light, you can really see all the cool colors. And then, see if the camera can pick it up. Yeah, it glows in the dark. <laughs> How cool is that? Okay, so we have the prepping process ready for the front. Um, things I had to do is I had to go along and use a scraper tool like this to get the paint off. See how this goes. I taped the edge just barely. Just the smallest amount there. Um, just so that way any runoff there just creates a nice line. Um, and I can go and touch that up with like black acrylic paint later. But anyway, got the um, prep work done here. So I'm going to put the uh, put the paint on next. I just kind of want to show a little bit of the process, the prep process. So just make sure all the tape's mashed down so paint doesn't leak in there. Um, yeah, and I think it's ready to go. I also put these screws in here because um, since this has a certain 
tremolo system. I didn't want to get paint in there or worry about plugging those holes, so I just put the screws back in there to make it easy. So I might uh, put tape around that, but yeah. Anyway, let's get ready. Okay, so we are ready for the front. As you can see, I did a little more prep work, added some tape there. I'm pretty good with pouring now, so I'm not super worried about it. I put toothpicks in um, like these things here, but the most important thing that we want to do is um, we want to make sure that this guitar or whatever you're pouring on is level, and this is level. As you can see, both bubbles are good there. I tested it in other locations, it's good. Um, but I'm doing it this way, I'm having it float. Um, I have a clamp holding it here, like a woodworking clamp to the desk. So that way I could pour it over the ground. Hopefully I don't regret this and get paint on the floor, but um, I have cardboard underneath it. But let's try this out, see how it works. I, um, I really just wanted to make sure that whenever I pour this, if it, last time I had it on cups and stuff and it kind of really helped to ruin the bottom of the guitar last time or the back of the guitar last time. So hopefully floating and with the tape and all the measures we've gone to, I can preserve both designs. So that's really the key to this acrylic pour on this guitar is preserving both designs. Okay, so quick update, it's the next day. Um, so I let the paint dry overnight, and I pulled the tape away from the edges, and I'm actually pretty satisfied with how that turned out. Um, I know like sometimes here you can see certain like bloops, but what I plan to do is just kind of go soften these edges by putting some black paint on it, hence why I had the sides black. I tried to make them primarily black. Um, and then I'll just soften up these edges by painting them. Uh, a little bit touching them up with a little bit of black like I can go in and round these with black um, so that way it looks like they're drops like what they originally were so um, I'm really excited for how this turned out a lot better than last time and check it out I didn't mess up the design on the back side so super cool um, very excited and yeah, so after this, I'm going to do some touch-ups to it if I video it and show you guys, and that's fine. But um, then after, I'm probably going to let it dry for another day or two as well, really just to make sure everything's dried and cured. Because it does have like a 
good amount of paint on it. <clears throat> and then once it's dried for a few days, then I'll come in, I'll shoot the uh, clear coat on it. And for that, it's going to be different than the last time. I'm, not, I'm definitely not doing that tabletop epoxy because that sucked. Um, so I have a different product this time that I'll show you guys here shortly. I forgot to do the headstock. Uh, so I have it leveled off here. And now I'm going to try to pour onto it. I taped off what I didn't want paint getting on. And I'm just going to hope this works. I haven't done this yet, so <laughs> we'll see. So we got the body here completely painted and the headstock down there that I just did. Um, what I'm going to do next actually is I'm going to do the tuner knobs. So I, I took these off of the Jackson because I sprayed them with a primer and I didn't really like the way how, as you can see, one is matte and one is glossy. And they're the same tuner pegs that came off of um, this one except that those are chrome. And I think these were technically chrome too. I just sprayed them black. But anyway, I can just spray those black. I'm not worried about that. But I can actually have a gloss paint for them to match the other guitar better. So I'm going to dip these in the paint, those two. And so I'm going to try this out, see how it does. Because I think it'd be kind of sick uh, to have, you know, a yellow and a green knob. So that glow in the dark while I have the paints all mixed up. So I'm going to try this out, see how it does, and I'll let you know. So here's what they ended up looking like here. So... Obviously, it's just prototypes. I don't know how it's really going to turn out, but we'll find out soon. Okay, here we have it all uh, coated with the clear um, coating stuff that I was talking about using. So this one turned out a little differently than the 8-string because I did them both at the same time, although they're two separate videos. I'll link the 8-strings video. But weird, it's like the same brand of paint, uh, Okay, editing me here. I know what happened. And the problem is that the two guitars, between the two guitars, this one, the Jackson, uh, had a pouring medium and a little bit of pouring oil mixed in with it to kind of help with uh, the color mixing and stuff like that and to create cells. And although it was cool, I would not do that again because in my eight string, I was able to get pretty sweet pours out of it. Uh, and the 2k was able to stick to the paint as well so i think what happened was that the pouring oil um just created a kind of waxy oily finish that the um stuff could not stick to so anyway back to the video word of warning if you're wanting to spray coat it and stuff to clean it up that flare 2k the two-part catalyzing paint uh, or spray is great on them um i would just recommend using a nicer quality paint uh, for pouring because this one's obviously giving me trouble. So anyway, I thought I'd say that before I start getting into this and putting it back together, but I'm excited to see what this turns out to be. Um, and I hope you enjoy it. Also just wanted to show this as I'm getting the guitar prepped to put it back together. I taped my neck completely, um, just to prevent any like overspray on these frets or on the fretboard. So I'm going to go through and clean this fretboard as well once I take this off. Uh, and I'm going to 
shine and polish these frets because they need it. <laughs> and then I'll go through and attach it on and we'll have a pretty sweet guitar. Okay, not going to lie. Probably forgot a little bit to video parts of the reassembly here. Um, mostly because I got the guitar back with its body here put together um now i gotta put the rest of the guitar on uh the accessories and stuff but i thought i'd show you kind of what i did because i ended up doing quite a bit in this process um which was really fun but i went and cleaned up the neck completely uh so i don't know if i have a before shot i'll see if i can throw it up if i have it but now the frets are like brand new and just so shiny um i also went and took out i kind of like scalloped part of the uh, fretboard here just to really and i and i curl i uh balled all the ends of the frets here with the file um just to really get like the smoothest feel on this guitar so it no longer feels like the dinky it once was it has now evolved to a place of grand stature <laughs> um but yeah it feels awesome feels really smooth and it's going to be great for like going up to play chords and stuff um, really excited about that. I am just going to finish installing the hardware. I won't really show you that because I kind of want to show you what the hardware looks like in it. Um, but if you have questions about this or want to see me put hardware in a guitar, let me know and I'll try to upload a video of that sometime soon. So this is the Super Strat style. So we got the humbucker, single, single, and then we got a, um, whammy bar here and then two tone knobs and the switch. So I'm gonna try to get all that installed and I will catch you guys back soon. All right, so here we have it. We have um, the final product. Uh, this acrylic poured guitar with neon paint, just beautiful. Uh, I just really, really love the way it turned out. I mean, just the cells that were created, the, the brightness of it compared to the black background, um, the pickups, these invader style green, neon green pickups, and the knobs turned out well, even though I might have dropped one and, and cracked it, but it was just the paint. Um, and then uh, just, yeah, just the, it just is beautiful, uh, just how it turned out. Just front and back, even the headstock looks really cool. Uh, I put locking tuners on there to, so this thing would actually keep in tune. And then um, the back is really nice, although no one really sees the back of a guitar. But it's very fun, but the front is definitely the stunning part of it. Um, I just really love the way that it turned out. I'm very happy with it. I also had some fun modifications to this. Um, I have this. So if you pull this one, we split the coil here, uh, so you can use it as a single coil. And then I have this uh, to, to pull to mod the guitar. So if this is engaged, and I'm in the bridge position here so this pickup is active, then it activates this pickup as well. So I can use both of these together, and I can pull this to use one coil and one coil there, um, or I can push it to use both of these in this, or I can flip this to this position where you'd normally use these, but with this activated, I can use all my pickups at once. So, pretty sick, super metal, and I'm excited uh, for you guys to hear it. I'll be putting out a video here soon, uh, hopefully collab, and you'll get to hear me and my buddy play uh, a song together, and I'll be using this guitar and kind of showing off the cool lighting stuff. So. Before I finish up this video, I want to show you the last cool thing about it, and we'll wrap it up. And here it is. The Jackson all lit up. Um, I'll try to move it this way so you can see it a little. Yeah. But it's just really stinking cool how the black light really just makes this stuff come to life. Um, when, and I'm sure I'll do another uh, acrylic pour, mostly because this right here is just so stinking cool. Um, the knobs lit up really well. The paint just did a great job reacting. And I found these little glow dots. So they actually glow and are really helpful for seeing if you're like on stage. That's what they're created for, but they look so sick with this guitar. So 
Um, yeah, I hope you like this video and stay tuned for the playthrough that I put up. See you soon. Oh, 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 oh,